Well, hey, CrossCar fans. I know it's been a long while, but we only have a weekend worth working on this so far. So we are continuing today. Uh, we're going to do the front suspension or front A-arms or front wheels, whatever you want to call it. Now, in the past, I've just kind of eyeballed the steering geometry, the caster, camber, mostly camber because caster is built into the frame. So we're going to make some tabs up and I'm actually going to make a jig for the alignment. Um, this is our budget build cross cart. So we're not going to spend any extra money on adjustable a arms if we don't get the steering geometry, right? So the big focus today is camber and I'm going to set the camber at just zero. Um, you could do a half inch or half a degree in or a degree in of, of camber, but I'm going to just cut the tabs, make the jig, and get them set up at zero. So, let's get to work. <laughs> All right, as most of you guys know, everything I do starts on paper. So, the basic design of this is just going to be some leftover inch and a half uh, square tubing. So we're gonna have two legs. We'll have some crossbars in here just to keep it stable. And then we're going to actually drill holes here. And that's gonna hold the hub off the ground at the exact height and at the exact angle we want. And we want zero degrees, which is gonna be 90 degree angle. Now, if you want positive or negative camber, you can still leave this at 90 and just add washers to the top to offset that hub angle. At least I think. I've never done this before. This is just a, an idea I had just to make, make things work a little better. So we need to get measurements off of the buggy. Now I'm using a 21 inch tire because I'm just using ATV leftovers, including tires. So the measurement to the bottom hole from the bottom is eight and a half inches on mine. Okay, now we also need the separation between the holes on the hub. We need this so we can get the measurements of our bars. And that was four and five eighths of an inch, how I saw it. Now you can make one of these or you can make two of these and have it just sitting on each hub. Now eight and a half to the bottom plus four and five eighths to the next hole will give us plus one inch will give us our total length we need. So that's nine and a half, 13, 14, and one eighth or so. That's mental math, so I'll do that in, in the end, but we'll get our vertical and we'll match that to the side, or at least do half, we'll probably do seven inches or eight inches for this. And we're gonna make two of those, we're gonna line them up, and it should work out pretty good. Perfect. All right, so we've got our two sides cut. So they're gonna sit like that. This is gonna be on the floor. That's gonna be mounted to the hub. Next up, is I'm gonna find the seam of this and not use the seam. I'm gonna put the seam on the side. So we need to find our holes. So the first one was at eight and a half. And then the second one is going to be 110 millimeters or four and five eighths. All right, now I'm just gonna drill an eighth inch pilot hole that goes all the way through so that we can reference the other side when we go to drill the uh, the other side. <laughs> All right, and then we're just going to use a stepper bit to get our size of our stud.
And now we drill out the other side to make room for the lug nut. I love stepper bits. Now we can start the assembly. What I decided to do, um, since this is recessed, so it's not kind of concentric to the rim, is I'm going to put a set of nuts on here to uh, level the surface. You probably don't have to do this. You can probably leave them a little bit crooked like you saw earlier, but we're doing alignment, so every, every little bit counts to, uh, to make it better. All right, with those on, it's time to check the fit of our custom piece here. It's looking good so far. There we have it. Perfect. Zero degree camber jig for your front a-arms oh i love it i love it that might be a problem that's sweet so as you hopefully so saw in the time lapse um i just took those spacers I made and put them on the back side so it's nice and level now. So let's see how we did. Check it on the brake rotor because that's going to give you your definite angle. 89.2. So if we put some weight out here we're 89.94 degrees. Almost a perfect 90 and if anything it's cambered in that 0 0.05 degrees. That's awesome. And another beautiful thing about this is look at this. Look at how much manipulation and alignment we have for when we make our tabs. This is a total win. We can position this wherever we want. It just gives us freedom to work on this front end and get it exactly where we want it. Now, now caster is important still. Even though there's caster built into the chassis, you still have the shock clearance on the upper AR. So if you have too much forward, your ball joints are going to let you do it, but your shock's going to run right into your upper A arm. So having this, this amount of control over exactly where you put these arms is going to be epic in the, the total front end. Yes! All right, so our jig is done. The next step is to make tabs. Now I'm going to use inch and a half wide, eighth inch thick for the bottom tabs or AR mounts, and I'm gonna use inch and a quarter for the top. The reason I'm doing that is because this is mounting to inch and a half tubular, and this is mounting to inch and a quarter tubular, so it'll be easier to line them up. I didn't do that on my previous builds, but I'm gonna do it on this one because it's just, it's kind of logical, and it'll make everything fit a little better. Now, I went back and watched my original video of this to, uh, to get the measurements and see how to do it. So if you wanna see this more in depth, uh, go check out that video. It's just uh, front AR mounting and how to make tabs. And what I came up with, just to give you the, the quick and dirty, is the hole for the bolt that mounts the A-arm goes 5 eighths from the end, and then it's an inch and 5 eighths to your hole saw cut, which is gonna make two different tabs, uh, only hitting the machines once, then another inch and 5 eighths to the second M10 hole and then just where to cut it off and this is going to make two tabs. I marked both ends of it so that I can go through, drill all my holes and then do my two hole saw cuts and I'll have four tabs in, I don't know, half or less the time. So this one's all marked up. I'm going to punch it, 
take it to the machine, get some tabs, and then I'm gonna mark this one and do the same. All right, so here's where we are. Um, I got this mounted. I've got all my tabs made. They're all trimmed up. They're all shaped. Um, they're on the top and bottom A arms. And I've got them sitting against the rail. And I've got scrap pieces of steel going across to help with alignment. Now, I started with these clamps. And you can see it gets a little crowded in here. Um, so. I grab some zip ties. Now I'm going to do the, the right side first and then I'm going to do the left side. And I'm going to take all these clamps off and just zip tie them in place. But I thought that would be an easy way because you can still slide that forward and backwards. You can still have your A arm resting on it. See the A arm's just resting on it. And that's going to align the tabs perfectly. And with this jig, your front end alignment is going to be perfect and using the same method for the other side is going to be really easy to match up your A-arm positioning so that your track width, or I'm sorry, wheelbase is the same left to right. So I'll get to work on that. I'll show you the final product and the tack welding. There we go. That is cleaned up significantly. Look at all that room to work and visualize and make good angles, make everything nice and square. That's what we're all about. All right, so now it's just about finding the ideal spot. Now I left these just a touch loose. They're still pretty tight, but I left these loose so that I can slide these back and forth. So first is just getting it, getting it on here. Now you can imagine how hard this was <laughs> before I came up with this little, little contraption. It was so hard to get these lined up in place and tight long enough to get a tack weld on them. Was it necessity is the mother of invention? Well, necessity just gave us this gift here. See, look at that. Just putting it right in place, sliding these as I need to, and I'm just gonna get this fitted up. Oh man, that's really nice. That is so nice. And I'm actually gonna grab a shock and just kind of test fit it see if we're gonna get the proper clearance. Ideally, you would set the bottom arms with a little bit of wiggle room on the top so that you can just slide the camber with the bottom A-arm locked in. Now we'll just drop a shock in here. And we can start to get an idea of angle and mounting and clearance. So it looks like this has good clearance everywhere. The shock is directly in the middle of the upper A arm, the caster looks like it's straight up and down. Looks like this needs this top needs to come back a little bit. Look at that, just that fine adjustment right there. Looks like it's getting our caster set right where it needs to be. And I'm still gonna tack the bottom in and then adjust the top one from there. And the caster is independent of our jig we made, so cool. There we go. I think that's the best the geometries turned out just off the cuff like this. That's it. I don't think I'm gonna move those tabs at all. As it sits now, it's got a 77 inch wheelbase, which means turning is going to be fantastic. Um, I could have moved these forward a little bit for like a 79 inch wheelbase. Um, the issue I have with this is that I like the front tire to be in front of the front bumper so that your approach angle is greater. 
the other ones I did that the front of the wheel sits directly flush with the front of the cart but this is going to be a yard cart so that shorter wheelbase is going to help it turn in tight spaces man that came out really good there's zero camber maybe maybe a quarter degree but looks good so now it's just uh, doing the same thing for the other side Let's do it. Look at how awesome this front end came out. And it came together so easily. I don't know if you saw how quickly that left side went together, but when you can cover something in a 30 second time lapse, <laughs> that means it was very easy and very painless. Um, those jigs were money. I'm so glad I had that idea and I hope it helps you guys with your builds. I struggled so much with these front A arms and I was kind of dreading it because Usually it's make the tabs, trim them, get your angle set with the tire, but there's bearings, there's your uh, ball joints. Those set it exactly at the camber that you want and hold your A-arms in place. It was, it was so nice. So I'm not gonna mount the suspension today. Uh, it's only been about a half a day. I had to run to the hardware store a couple times, which burned a couple hours of the day, but we haven't decided our ride height yet. I've got this sitting at 10 inches, um, but I don't know if I want it to be that high. It's kind of a yard cart. Um, I don't know if it's gonna see much high clearance areas. Um, I'm thinking maybe eight, seven or eight inches, maybe the full 10, I don't know. But we're gonna mount the rear axle before we decide any kind of ride height, and that's the, uh, the rest of the day or the next episode for you guys. So thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. See you next time.